Dear Bioware, be honest with me. You knew this was coming. You had to have. You're the developer behind the quintessential modern AAA science fiction space opera Mass Effect. I've written to you before about some shit you better not do in Mass Effect Andromeda, and I still mean it, but I've changed my format to fit the brand of being annoyingly pedantic about video game science, and you know what? I have to commend you. You've spent more time thinking about your science than most game franchises have, and we don't have a lot of science fiction these days. We get a lot of science fantasy, which is fine. Science fantasy is great. You get laser swords and midichlorians, and it's awesome. As long as they don't try to explain their fantastic space technology using meaningless and heartburn-inducing technobabble. I'm sad to say that, while your Mass Effect technology is significantly more well thought out than most franchises, the closer I examine it, the more worried I get. Because while you seem to know that certain things like special relativity and time dilation exist, your methods of dealing with them leave something to be desired. I hate to say this, but... Say it with me now. Bioware, your faster than light technology makes no goddamn sense. Almost all the technology in the Mass Effect universe centers around one thing, Element Zero. Element Zero is created from materials that are within the effective range of stars that go supernova. And again, before I rip you down, I have to commend you, Bioware, because honestly, this is how a lot of elements get created. Gold, iron, and all sorts of heavy metals that exist right here on our very planet didn't exist when the Big Bang happened, and were rather forged under the extreme pressures and heat created when stars die. Element Zero is capable of creating mass effect fields which can lower or raise the mass of whatever is in their circle of influence, and that's basically it. From there you get raising and lowering mass to create things like artificial gravity, high efficiency weaponry, and faster than light travel, which is where things start to get a little sticky. So let's talk about mass for a second. We tend to think of mass as the substantiveness of things. Like, I have mass because I'm a thing that exists, and things that exist have mass. This holds true for most things we'll observe in our everyday lives. However, thinking about mass as stuffness is the trap that gets people pulled into thinking that light has mass merely because it's made of particles, but thingness isn't the defining characteristic of mass. Instead, mass is an object's resistance to changes in its state of motion, or, more simply, a measurement of how hard it is to move something. In our day-to-day -day lives, mass remains more or less constant for just about everything, because relative to one another, we're not moving a whole lot. But once you start factoring in the speed of light and speeds near the speed of light, or even faster, mass starts to take on a whole different definition. I used to not understand why accelerating to the speed of light is impossible. I really didn't. It's complicated, and from my everyday experiences with life and Newtonian physics, I knew that in order to go fast, all you have to do is apply more force. Want to drive faster? Step on the gas. Of course, as you get faster and faster, it actually takes more energy to accelerate you the same amount of speed. So, say you're floating through space at 100,000 miles per hour, right? It takes more energy to accelerate you to 100,001 miles per hour than it does to accelerate you from, say, 55 miles per hour to 56 miles per hour. This is the guiding principle behind the speed of light speed limit our universe has for massive objects. As you get closer and closer to the speed of light, it takes exponentially more energy to accelerate you even faster. You can reduce the energy requirements a lot if you have an object with less mass, but if it has any mass at all, it will always require an infinite amount of energy to get to the speed of light. Another way to look at it is that C, uh, for those of you who were paying attention during my Halo video last week, C is a shorthand for the speed of light. Uh, C is a speed that things with no mass go. Another somewhat strange thing to keep in mind is that the faster you move relative to something else, the slower time moves for you. This doesn't really matter in most of our day-to-day -day activities, as the time dilation experience while driving to the store isn't really significant, but it's not just a theoretical concept. Time in the International Space Station, uh, which travels at 4.76 miles per second, or over 17,000 miles per hour, a time there runs at point zero 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 zero. Zero, 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 point 14% slower than it does just hanging out here on Earth. And GPS satellites in orbit have to be specifically calibrated to compensate for distortions in space-time. Traveling fast does really fucking wonky things to time and space, so how does this tie into FTL drives in the Mass Effect universe? Okay, say for a second that you buy that a magical space rock called Element Zero can magically reduce mass to fractions of nothing or even nothing at all. The Mass Effect Codex posits that element zero can reduce the mass of an object, meaning that it takes less energy to accelerate. Makes sense, but we already know from earlier, if an object has any mass at all, it cannot reach light speed without infinite energy. 
even if it weighs as little as a pea. Should the ship reach zero mass and somehow manages to not burst into a million photons, it would presumably be able to reach light speed almost immediately. But faster than light? No. Interestingly, there are theoretical concepts in relativity regarding negative mass, which are surprisingly plausible as a faster than light propulsion mechanism, and, well, you know, could feasibly work given the nature of Mass Effect technology. Unfortunately, this is where things start to get really fucked up. You see, Bioware, I notice that you want to have your cake and eat it too. You guys want to pretend like you know about relativity and mention stuff about space-time distortion and the speed of light, but I'm on to you. Your codex entries specifically say that FTL drives effectively raise the speed of light within the mass effect field, allowing high-speed travel with negligible relativistic time dilation effects. Excuse me? What? You and I need to have a fucking talk, Bioware, because this is- I- 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 I can't! Dropping relativistic time dilation in there like you know a fuck, I swear to god I will- Okay. <sighs> Calm down, Austin. Light speed is constant. We're trained to think of speed like Isaac Newton told us. Like if you're on a moving ship and fire a bullet at someone in front of you, the bullet is traveling at the same speed as the ship, plus the speed of the bullet. Light, however, doesn't operate this way. Light always, always, always travels at the same speed. It is capable of changing direction, however, which is why we occasionally perceive light as traveling more slowly. Distortions in local space-time, which are created by anything with mass, like a person, a spaceship, a sun, or a black hole, can refract light like a lens, but it's not actually changing its speed. I see you there, Bioware, trying to front like science fiction, but you're full of shit! Time dilation and space-time distortion aren't ignorable! The only way to not create space-time distortions is to not have mass, and the only way to avoid time dilation is to not move! So, what? You're saying that spaceships in Mass Effect are just massless hunks of space rocks sitting at zero Kelvin? No! We've theorized possible ways to circumvent limitations on the speed of light with things like the Alcubierre Drive actually taking advantage of the distortion of space-time in order to push themselves forward by expanding it behind the ship and compressing it in front of the ship. This would theoretically make it possible for the ship to move without actually accelerating. It's complicated, and most aren't entirely sure that it can work, but even it, with its weird physics hacking principles, isn't immune to the effects of time dilation. So what happens if you were to go faster than the speed of light? What would happen if you were to, say, travel from Earth to the Citadel using a mass relay? Well, if you approximate the travel distance being 20,000 light years and a trip taking approximately 5 minutes or less, it gives you an absurdly large speed in meters per second. And for now, I'm done saying big numbers because I keep messing them up, but this is many many times faster than the speed of light. So you enter the mass relay and experience five minutes of travel. Cool. So to find out what the rest of the world experiences, luckily we have this really easy formula, and all you have to do is plug the numbers in, hit enter, and fuck. Oh, okay, uh, just a second. Plug these numbers, hit enter, and get really big numbers. Okay. That's in seconds, so 436 million seconds, that, what's that in years? 13.8 years. So as you approach the speed of light, time outside the vessel moves more slowly until you, in theory, reach the speed of light, in which case, when you follow this formula, you get zero, which means that if you're traveling 10 light minutes of distance, you experience no time of travel and instantly teleport to your location, but the world around you will be 10 minutes in the future. When you go faster than the speed of light, external time goes the other direction in theory. So every time you use a mass relay to get from, say, Earth to the Citadel, you're arriving there 13.8 years in the past. And that's not to mention what would happen to the local habitat when the massive distortive ripples in space-time arrive with you, considering the ship in question presumably has a negative mass which allows it to reach speeds past sea to begin with, giving it a negative gravity pressure, and probably a large one since it has to amass enough energy to travel 4 million times the speed of of light. Things with positive mass, like, say, the sun, attract things to it. Negative mass arriving at four million times the speed of light would likely have utterly catastrophic effects to anything nearby, <gasps> sending huge pulses of disruptive anti-gravity waves, pushing satellites out of orbit and possibly disrupting entire moon's orbit, sending them hurling into space or possibly into their parenting planet. This is not the kind of technology you want to mess around with. So, Bioware, I take it back. You're not science fiction. 
your science fantasy. Sure, you bandy about words like relativity, space-time, distortion, and time dilation, but let's be honest. You don't know what any of them mean, and why would you need to? You just want to tell an epic story that spans an epic stage without any hassle. And who knows, maybe someday we'll crack the codes of faster than light travel that doesn't break my calculator and send it screaming. I really look forward to that day. If not, I'll just have to live in a world where my pizza arrives at my door before I even ordered it. Sincerely, Austin. Thank you to everyone who watched my video on Mass Effect FTL drives! I think I did it right. <laughs> Honestly, a lot of this is very theoretical and there's not a lot of easy math to figure out how it would work. We are probably never gonna crack the case of going faster than the speed of light or even the speed of light in my lifetime. So it's not really something I have to worry about. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. I like when people share my videos cause then more people see it and I'm like, yay, all my work, it was worth it. I also wanna throw out a personal thank you to our Patreon supporters who make this show possible. If you like this show better than a like and a subscribe could possibly portray, then go ahead and head over to our Patreon page if you have disposable funds and contribute whatever you can to make our show continue. We really appreciate it. We love making videos and I'm gonna go do stuff now. Yeah. See you next week.